In the second part of lecture 5, we'll continue to discuss our fleet assignment model. More specifically, this will be a short video to see how we can integrate the fleet assignment model with the passenger mixed flow problem that we have discussed in the previous lecture. This combined model was presented in literature as being the itinerary based fleet assignment model. We'll see how to format this integrated model and briefly discuss how we can solve it. So, as explained, the itinerary based fleet assignment model combines two models the passenger mixed flow model in which we capture the spillage and the recapture effects in our network, so the supply side and how the demand can be accommodated in our capacity solution, and the fleet assignment model that defines how we should allocate the capacity in such a way that we reduce the revenue losses of having to spill passengers. This problem was discussed in a paper from Barnard et al, already published in 2002, but it's still valid and relevant to model the fleet assignment model for an urban spoke airline. Note that with this integration, our cap parameter in the passenger mix flow problem will now be replaced by the seat capacity of the aircraft type K multiplied by the binary decision variable that tells us if that specific aircraft type K is being allocated to flight I or not. So if we redefine our fleet allocation problem, we still want to minimize our costs now coming from the spillage of passenger and also from the allocation of our aircraft types to flights. But we do have now the possibility to consider the spillage and recaption options considered in our passenger mixed flow problem. In terms of considerations when computing our optimal solution, we have to consider the airline fleet schedule, the conservation of aircraft flow in each node in our time space networks, the flight limitations, the turnaround times per aircraft type and, for the passenger mixed flow problem, the unconstrained demand and the recapture rates considered per itinerary. The combined model is exactly a combination of the two models. We can see here in this slide, in blue, the fleet allocation model part, as discussed in the previous video, and in red, the passenger mixed flow model, as discussed in the previous lecture, in lecture 4. These models are integrated in the objective function, in which the sum of the costs from both the fleet allocation and the spillage costs are summed. And they are also integrated in constraint C4, in which we replace the cap parameter from the passenger mixed flow problem, that in that case will appear in the right hand side of the equation, by it's the multiplication of the seats by the fleet allocation decision variables, as discussed before. This means that our capacity per flight I is not defined beforehand as we assume in our passenger mix flow problem, but is part of the decision process. This is one of the applications in which the passenger mix flow problem can be of added use, in which we model our passenger itineraries as part of the capacity allocation problem, so part of the fleet assignment problem, solving the demand supply dichotomy that we have discussed before. And how can we solve this problem? An easy but not exact approach will be to use the column generation algorithm discussed to solve the passenger mix flow problem. But now we have first to relax our binary and integer decision variables from our fleet assignment model. This is to say that we're going to assume that our decision variables will be continuous, otherwise it would not be possible to obtain the dual variables that we need to use to implement our column generation algorithm. After doing this, we can follow the same approach discussed to solve the passenger mix flow problem. We initiate our restricted master problem with only the fictitious itineraries, compute the dual variables that we use to check the slackness for each one of the non-basic columns, and if we have columns that price out the existing ones, and we have these columns to our restricted master problem and solve again our itinerary-based fleet assignment model. Otherwise, if there are no columns that price out the existing columns, we stop the column generation algorithm. Since we have relaxed our fleet assignment related decision variables, we are not done yet. We will have to refer back to our original problem with the flight arcs decision variables being binary again and resolve again our restricted master problem with the columns we have in all the iterations of our column generation algorithm. Two notes here. We don't need to reset our ground arcs decision variables to be integer because enforcing that the flight variables are binary and following our time-space network uh, structure, it should be enough to have solutions in which the ground arcs decision variables values are integer. The second note is that this is a simple approach to solve this problem, which follows what we discuss for the passenger mix flow problem, but this does not guarantee that our final solution is optimal. 
Okay, let's leave it here and I'll rejoin you in our next video lecture in which we'll discuss the timetable design. I'll see you there.